How's it going, everybody? This is RBT coming at you with my Sun Bowl recap video. And Georgia Tech shocks the world and beats USC 21-7. to Everybody in the country, including me, was predicting a USC blowout in this game. But Georgia Tech came out, looked inspired, well, looked inspired, and played a dominant game, played very good defense, and just shut down USC totally. Um, everybody expected USC with the offense that they have to go out and light up the scoreboard because this is a Georgia Tech team that has one of the worst defenses in all F all automatic qualifying schools in the country. They are like 79th in the country, giving up 30 points a game, and USC comes out and puts seven points on the board. I mean, yeah, they have Mac Maxwood at starting quarterback, but still, USC have five star talent all across the field on defense and on offense, and you only put muster up seven points. Of offense against Georgia Tech and Georgia Tech I mean they played very good uh, against the pass I mean they intercepted Max Wicks three times two of those times were in the end zone uh, especially late um, I mean that pass was horrible they were running Tampa defense there was three linebackers right there and I don't know who he was throwing to man but he he did not impress me at all he didn't really impress me at all against the uh, in the Notre Dame game I mean, the one thing is there is arm strength, but there's so much more than arm strength to be a successful quarterback. I mean, you have to be accurate, got to make good reads, um, just all kinds of stuff. And he, all I've seen is good arm strength, not not accurate. And just, if Max Brown doesn't come in, the five star coming to the USC right now, if he doesn't come in and play very well right away and win the starting job over Max Wittick. I don't, USC's not looking too good, man, like, I mean, Max Wittick could, I mean, yeah, this is his only second game starting, but I mean, he's looked very bad, and if he doesn't really improve over the offseason, and Max Brown doesn't start over him, I don't know which direction is going to be going, and if they're going to improve, or they even actually can get worse, but, uh, I think Max Brown's going to be a good quarterback, though, I'm not even sure he's going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the country, but I think he's going to end up being a pretty solid quarterback for USC, but we'll see where that goes. If Max Wick starts over him, that's not a good sign to start off with. He's going to be an early enrollee, so we'll see where that goes. But let's get to this game. Like I said, Georgia Tech wins this game 21-7. USC just looked absolutely, completely uninspired. Preseason, they wanted to make national championship game. You, you don't make the national championship game turning the ball over 33 times and losing five games. Uh, 33 times they turned the ball over this year was the most by any team. Uh, that's a automatic qualifier. Just... Or it was, a, it was the most turnovers by a team with a winning record, which was 7-5, which it wasn't really that much of a winning record. And they finished the season 7-6. Georgia Tech finished the season 7-7. Seven seven. They played 14 games because they played in the ACC championship game against Florida State and lost. Um, and uh, USC finished the season 7-6. And, and Georgia Tech was coming into this game with 6-7. And, and just everybody in the country is predicting USC, like I said, including myself. And Georgia Tech just comes out and whoops them. USC was only third, 3 of 15 on third downs, only had 205 total yards against a not-so-great Georgia Tech defense, only threw the ball, had 14 completions on 37 attempts, only 107 yards passing. Uh, like I said, he threw one touchdown pass and three interceptions. They ran the ball 22 times for 98 yards. Silas Red did look pretty good, but, I mean, he wasn't enough, obviously, because they kept turning the ball over. Um, uh, Silas Red had 17 carries for 88 yards. Uh, Tavon Washington and uh, Vad Lee both played in this game, and Tavon Washington was 3 of 5, 49 yards a touchdown. Vad Lee, 2 of, two of 5, 26 yards and a touchdown. Tavon Washington, 46 yards and 16 carries. Vad Lee, 52 yards and 10 carries. And I believe Vad Lee is actually coming back next year, and he he seems like a very good quarterback to run the triple option. I think he's only a sophomore. Uh, freshman, man, he's a freshman, so he'll be here for four more years, man, that's going to be scary, or three more years, but he looked very good in that triple option offense, and Tavon Washington, this was his last game, uh, what happened to Josh Nesbitt, I remember he was a starter a few years ago, and he was very good in that triple option option, triple option offense, where did he go, I have to look that up in a minute, but, uh, yeah, man, um, Georgia Tech about gave it away there at the end, though. They kept him penalty after penalty. They had eight penalties for 88 yards. Uh, I'm sure Paul Johnson and Georgia Tech would have lost that game. Paul Johnson would have got insane because they gave him so many opportunities because of penalties, and they didn't capitalize because Mac Wood kept turning the ball over in the red zone and not making and making very poor decisions. But uh, 
anyways, from, like I said, Georgia Tech came out inspired, wanted to shock the world and beat USC, and they did that and won 21-7. USC was so uninspired in this game, did not look like they even wanted to be there. They even said on CBS during the game that to, for a dinner, it was there's one dinner that both teams supposed to be there, mingle and be honored for making the ball game. Georgia Tech showed up and was there for like an hour and 15 minutes, according to Georgia Tech's coaches and representatives, whatever. USC didn't even show up to the dinner, and that's pathetic. That is absolutely pathetic and disrespectful for all people that that, that prepared for that dinner and did whatever it took to just put on that dinner. And they didn't even have the respect to show up. That is absolutely immature by Lane Kiffin and the whole entire coaching staff. And it's absolutely ridiculous. But of course, they claim that they showed up 30 minutes late. And by the time they got there, Georgia Tech had already left. But pictures posted, representatives talking. Seems like USC didn't even show up. Which is absolutely ridiculous and just completely disrespectful to all the people that showed that try to put on that dinner, that's just, no, you don't do that, no matter what, no matter if you're playing in the Nutella breadstick bowl or something like that, you don't disrespect and just completely take advantage or um, aren't grateful or the people that are actually trying to do stuff for you as uh, example, putting on a dinner, that's just, that's ridiculous and somebody needs to be punished for that because that's just wrong, but anyways, that was my recap for the USC Georgia Tech Sun Bowl. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought of this game in the comment section below. Have a great day, guys, and have a happy and safe New Year's. And as always, roll tight, go Sox, and go Titans to you. And be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so you don't miss any of my bowl recaps. I'll see you later.